to this edition of Simsbury School News. My name is Dominique Avery. Today, our focus will be on the national effort to incorporate computer science into public schools. Joining me today to discuss what's going on in Simsbury is Melissa Farrington, a Simsbury computer science teacher. She has brought two students with her, Zach Walsh and Anthony Mayen, both seniors at Simsbury High School. Welcome and thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to talk about the National Computer Science Week and what Simsbury will be doing to observe it. But in order to do that, Melissa and I agreed that we should first discuss what computer science is. Okay, Melissa, what is computer science? Well, computer science simply is problem solving. It's really taking any problem, breaking it down, and into steps that we can then simulate or solve on a computer. So um, it's, that's really all it is. It crosses all disciplines, almost everything you can think of now. Every industry, every um, discipline uses computer science to solve problems. So I know, I, I know very little bit about what's behind the scenes in computers, but I know that people talk about um, coding and programming. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Anybody? Well, coding and programming is really the difference between solving the problems and then translating it into the computer. So code is the language that the computer speaks and the language that the computer can understand. So coding is there, therefore the process of taking human language and turning it into code. But programming is the process of coming up with algorithms, which are just a series of steps like anything else that you can use to solve a problem and translating that language into the computer's language. Okay, so um, maybe we could try that answer again. Say it again for somebody really stupid. <laughs> so coding is like, um, is it numbers or is it letters or it's symbols? Letters. Yeah, it's, it's letters, it's words, but it's, it's about translating it into the computer's words. So the computer uses certain languages that are very specific and very rigid so that they know exactly what, what to do with those words that you give it. So when we have a problem that we think of in terms of everyday language where you'd say, oh, you just pick up the cup or you, you take a left-hand turn, the computer has to understand very specifically how to do those things. So coding is a language, code is a language that's very specific that the computer understands very well, and it is words with certain symbols that, and certain syntax, which is just the setup of all that that we use that the computer can understand. So that's the difference between coding where you translate it and programming where you come up with, with the, the solving behind the scenes. Okay, I think I'm starting to get it. Uh, Melissa, maybe I, I can turn to you for a little bit of history. Uh, mm -hmm. When did computer science start? I, I remember having a friend 40 years ago who was into computer science, a woman, very right. unusual. She was at Yale and she would have to go to a building where there was this huge computer in a mainframe. So. It, Exactly, and um, you're right on target. Uh, computers have been around for a long time, since the 1800s, actually. The first computers were really machines, and the first processing that those machines did were basically um, arithmetic, just number crunching. Eventually, uh, they really came to um, a new level during World War II, and World War II, with all the... Um, everything going on with the, the war and trying to, one of the big challenges was to try to decode Nazi signals. And so computers really came into, uh, took a different step and really became much more complicated and much more sophisticated during World War II. There was a lot of innovation that happened then. And um, you're talking about women, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, but you know, there was a big push for an, a big effort of women to get involved in the war. So women really stepped up and took on roles that they typically had not had before. And there's a, one woman in particular, Grace Hopper, who became a rear admiral in the Navy. She joined the Navy and um, she was actually one of the first programmers. She um, ended up staying with the Navy. She had a career in the Navy. She wrote the first compiler, which basically, she, her idea, the, the original machines basically just were mechanical. They um, had a certain way that they worked. They were, it was all mechanical, kind of like an adding machine almost. But she felt like there should be a language, we should be able to run these machines by doing language. And that language should be more like what we speak, more like English language that we can understand. So she developed what's called a compiler that takes what Zach was talking about, a language in a, 
that we can sort of understand that's more like English and convert it into a language that the machine can understand. And so she developed the compiler and after that, that was a huge breakthrough in computing. And after that, then she went on to develop a language called COBOL, which was used in lots of business, and a lot of people have heard of that language and um, had a career in it. And it was not uncommon for women to be really involved in computer science. Yeah, that sort of fell off, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Anthony, um, what kind of computer science courses are offered at Simsbury High School, and what do you actually learn in those classes? Well, I mean, first there's uh, computer science principles where basically you take this thing called the App Inventor um, developed by MIT and it's basically coding with blocks. You um, have a design side, you have a block side, so you can design first and, you know, basically um, make the app look like how you want it to and then you go to the block side and you basically program it to do what you want it to do. So it's basically like kind of the best of both worlds it's not like just one thing or the other like you can't just you know make an app look pretty and not make like, not like take the steps to really um, develop it and make it commit like actions events you have to combine both into one so um yeah computer science principles is just problem solving an app inventor and I'm taking or I took last year advanced placement computer science which is learning Java, which is a text-based language. Sort of, it's sort of the next step from what Ms. Farrington was talking about earlier. And uh, this year, I've been lucky enough to be a TA for that class, a teaching assistant for the next group. And it's been, it's been really powerful. You know, you learn the, the most core basic um, code, and you learn how to really implement things from the ground up. So we would learn how to develop tools at any level. What, what the kids are learning in that class is the foundation to do anything in computer science, and that's what's great about that class. So were the two of you always interested in computer science, or did this start at the high school? Anthony, how, what happened with you? Um, this started not too long ago. Um, I had an interest in doing game design, and I was really dead set on it at first. And then, I don't know what happened. Recently, I visited Champlain College, and after looking at their program, um, I decided to switch to the programming side of gaming. So I developed more of an interest in um, that, and from there I decided to go towards computer science to prepare me for a career in game programming. So, so that's what you want to do with it? You want to do game, gaming programming? Definitely, yes. Right. How about you? Well, I think my interest was really first start sparked by a teacher I had in eighth grade, um, Mr. Smith. And he taught us how to program on our, on our little calculators, and it was really low-level stuff, but it was so interesting to me that you could take this device that really just did adding and subtracting and a couple other math related things and make it do all kinds of, make, you can make it run little games or do, do a formula for you that you were learning in, in your science classes. And from there it, it really got sparked in my junior year when I finally took AP Computer Science. Okay, Melissa, this is so far above my <laughs> head. I cannot imagine sitting in high school and, and dealing with any of this stuff. Um, when do, is that, is that because sort of modern young people are basically born into computing because cell phones and tablets and, and uh, laptops are all part of their DNA? What do you think? Well, these guys are definitely more computer native than you and I are. It's the, the computers have, they, they don't know a world without computers. When um, the laptops have always been around for these guys. The internet has always been around. We remember the time when we didn't have those. So there's a big change. They're much more comfortable. But I think that um, they're very comfortable as users, but what computer science does and what we're trying to promote is that we want them to be creators. We want them to create with it, not just be a user. So um, that's sort of the next step from going from being a computer user to actually being able to use the computer to create um, artifacts to create and solve problems and that's that's the next level and that's what we work on in computer science. So what do you think um, sort of this whole national effort to get more people involved in computing what do you think the um, perceptions of computer programmers are and uh, are these stereotypes that you think need to be broken? Oh man, well, that's, that's a, I think that's a huge question with a lot of different facets to it, that, and it's a huge problem that we really need to solve, but I think so many people think of computer scientists or programmers as people who sit down and type ones and zeros in front of a black and green computer screen all day, and, and really, that, I don't think that's the reality of it anymore. There are people 
working at places like Google and Apple who work in these very high-tech new environments that are more focused around the person and having an enjoyable workplace and you, you know anyone can be a programmer all kinds of people are programmers and they don't sit in a cubicle and do a boring desk job where they're just hitting hitting a keyboard all day it's, it's changed a lot and I think that's important to realize um, and isn't there an issue, though, I mean, from, from what I saw on the website there's, uh, of code.org, there's an issue of women and minorities who are not uh, particularly uh, drawn to this. Um, do you have any thoughts about that, Anthony? Well, um, I definitely think that um, like women and minorities alike should be drawn to this. This isn't just something for a specific group of people. This is something that anyone can do. You don't have to be like a straight-A student. You don't have to, you know, have your face buried in books every night. Um, anyone can program with technology. It's important to know how to program because in this day and age, you can use your phone to turn on your TV. Before, if you lost your remote, then you were just sitting there watching a channel that you probably didn't want to watch anymore. But now, you know, there's more of a forward movement in programming. And, um, yeah, I just feel like it's really important and essential for people to do programming. And they shouldn't feel intimidated. They shouldn't feel like, you know, that has to be their life. I mean, if they wanted to, then that's fine. But it doesn't have to be every asset of their life, but it's a definitely an important tool to know. So how, do, you, um, do you reach young people? And what, what kinds of things do you do at the elementary level? And are those kids already primed like these are? Do they know as much as these kids well, do? Well, not really. And um, we, right now we have the, the programs that we have are, are at the high school. The, some of the elementary schools do have some after school programs that some people are running, but there's not a big push for computer science education yet, and I say yet because I'm hoping that there will be, but um, that's one thing that we're trying to promote with our Computer Science Education Week. Because not only do students not know what computer science is, but teachers don't know either, and uh, parents don't know. And so what we're, our, our effort is, is to try to, um, to educate everyone. Try to give them a little bit more of a perspective about what computer science is, what it's like to try to get rid of some of these perceptions that it's hard. Do you guys think it's hard? Not, no. not that not No, that it's not hard, but people think it's hard. Melissa, thank you so much for, um, for all this information. That's a perfect segue to our second part, um, where we're going to switch gears and guests and talk specifically about uh, the week of December 18th through 14th, which is being observed as uh, nationwide as Computer Science Education Week. We'll be back after a video we're going to show you with the CEO of YouTube, where she explains how computer science changed her life. Don't go away. We're making codes. I think it's really important to expose kids to technology, and the amazing thing is that they're natives, and so they learn it really, really fast, faster sometimes than us. Okay, now they're going to press run. They can build things. They can learn new things. They can explore, and we're giving them a tool to enable them to take advantage of the digital future that we all live in. I decided to take my first computer science class between my junior and senior year in college, and I thought it was too late for me initially. I thought, oh, I already, my life is already set, but I decided I'd take a computer science class, and no one I knew was taking any computer science classes, and I loved it. And then I started working, and I realized how creative, how social, how fun it was, how I could build things and create things that people all over the world could use. If you can change technology, you can change the world. We're back. Simsbury senior Zach Walsh is still here, and he's been joined by Jacqueline Petrella, math department supervisor, and high school senior Ashley Muser. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, computer, computer Education Science Week, uh, I'm told, is the second week of December, mm -hmm. and um, maybe you could outline a little bit for me what, what it is and uh, what's the purpose of it. It's, um, it's a national push to educate students at all levels, so grades K through 12, to computer science and just to spark their interest in it and to get them exposed to the exciting activities or the things that they can learn and what computer science has to offer. So it's developing activities that are age appropriate from kindergarten up through high school just to give them an, that exposure and what it can take them, you know, or lead them to do in life. 
So we just showed a video with the head of YouTube uh, talking about um, her introduction to computer science and how important it was. And it, we got it from an organization called Code.org. What is Code.org? So Code.org is a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to increasing participation in computer science. Uh, they want to make it more available to different schools and also increase participation by women and minorities. Um, so they really believe that all students should be able to learn computer science and other STEM courses. And one of the ways they're doing this to increase participation by women is like a frozen maze they have to appeal to young girls where they can learn block programming by something that they enjoy frozen and really appeals to them. So how, um, I, I'm sort of interested in this, this whole concept mm -hmm. of women and computer programming. How did you um, get interested? Have you always been interested or is this something new? Um, I actually had the same interest. It started at the same time as Zach with our eighth grade teacher who showed us with calculators how you could program them. And I don't know, I've just always enjoyed math and logic and I think it falls really nicely with computer science. Just the problem solving and creative thinking to get a computer to do something that you want it to do. So that really appealed to me. Do you think um, the same kind of question I asked before that Anthony and Zach answered, do you think there are sort of prejudices against among girls, young girls especially, on uh, about computer programming? Um, I don't know if the, how much of a prejudice exists, but I think when, I think there's definitely, there's more men in the field, so they'll, I guess, yes, they will think that it's male dominated and are discouraged and also I think the first opportunity when they go to take it they may see that there's so many more guys there and be intimidated and feel like it's not a place they should be or feel too afraid to ask for help and that they don't want to continue with it. I've actually heard, I, I think I it just jumped into my mind uh, about a computer camp, uh, maybe it was on NPR a program about so I have, how girls were so intimidated they couldn't ask questions and then they dropped out or something. So uh, let's go back to Computer Science Education Week and, and what is Simsbury actually uh, hoping to accomplish and what is going to be going on? Um, and I understand things are going on from K through 12, they so are. we have a lot to, you have a lot to tell me about. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, our goal is to educate students K-12 to what computer science is. Yeah. Um, and we're creating age-appropriate activities, and a lot of them have been developed by Code.org. And so it's to get kids excited about it is, is the main purpose, and to educate them about what computer science is, to teach them what an algorithm is. So even at the kindergarten lev level, we're teaching them what is an algorithm, and they say it with me, you know, and they go through the algorithm and, and teach them that it's a series of steps. And their program is actually what we call Unplugged, and they're going to be um, moving little little figures around a grid using arrows. So are they going up, down, left, and right? And then it progresses through high school doing mazes on the computer where they use the block language. So, I mean, maybe it just occurred to me, maybe we should send parents to code.org because there's some yeah. great videos on there and they should go take a look. I was, my eyes were opened. I just mm -hmm. thought coding was so incredibly complicated. Nobody could ever possibly learn about it, no, but then I yeah. saw that there, there are entry levels there and you can mm -hmm. figure it out. So, um, Zach, have you been involved in, in, in preparing any of these uh, yeah, lessons? Yeah, I've actually been lucky enough to um, teach some of the teachers. Uh, Simsbury does professional development days occasionally, as most districts do, and Ms. Farrington asked me, my, my computer science teacher asked me if I wanted to come and assist her in teaching these these teachers how what their lessons are going to be. So. I helped with a uh, th third and fourth grade and the fifth and sixth grade set of teachers and sort of walked them through what their lesson is going to be for their kids, what they should emphasize, how they can tell their kids, how, how they can get the message across to their kids that computer science is not that scary. It can be fun. Uh, you can take something that you're familiar with, like Angry Birds, which is a fun little game that plenty of kids that age are well aware, with, aware of and play with that and turn it into a coding exercise and hopefully hopefully we can get them interested in that by the time they get to the high school they'll be um, ready to take AP computer science so how um, I'm impressed a uh, student teaching the teachers you know, he, he he did a great job and the teachers were equally I think scared going in because they don't know what computer science is 
And so I think Zach put them at ease, you know, teaching them because he made he made it easy for them to understand. He was able to break it down and, and make it less intimidating because even as you said, as an adult, if you don't know anything about it, it can be pretty scary. But if you do go on to code.org, you can see the tutorials and you can walk yourself through a lot of activities and learn about the basics. Ashley, are you going to also be involved? Uh, have you been involved with the younger kids? or? Yeah, um, during the week I'm going to go to the elementary schools and, along with Zach and some other students and help teach the kids and be part of the week and hopefully show them that you know women can be a part of this too. Like the girls don't have to be scared. Like they can go for it and enjoy it and hopefully spark an interest. How many young women at the high school are as involved as you are? Um, not that many. In my class last year, there were, I think, maybe four or five of us. And this year, I know the class that I'm teeing, there's only one girl on that. So, yeah. so there's some work to do at the high school. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've definitely increased interest with, with girls. Um, with the new introduction to computer science principles, I think it's a little less um, intimidating than the AP computer science. So we have more girls in that class as well. So they can get an introduction to it and then hopefully move on to the next level course. So we're, we're growing the interest, and last year during this week, we went to all the high school classes to educate them about computer science and to draw interest in and get kids to sign up for the course. And previous to this year, we only had one computer science course at the high school, and now we have four um, sections of it. So the interest is definitely growing. So how does computer science fit into the larger picture of the STEM classes, science, technology, engineering, and math? Is it... Um, is there credit for it? Is this something that's considered a credit class for graduation? Or? It's, um, well, computer science, you certainly receive a credit for graduation, and it falls in the math department, so it is a math credit. Um, and high school students have to get four math credits, and so this can be one of their four. And it certainly falls into the STEM category of exploring the engineering and the computer and the math field. So um, just tell me a little bit how this week is going to um, how it's going to uh, flow, um, keeping in mind that this show is going to air afterwards as well. So we're going to talk more generally about it. I mean, it's sort of there going to be assembly in every uh, school saying this is computer science week, or how is it actually going to work? Um, we're doing it through the classroom setting. So like they said, they're going to be going into the elementary schools, and the teachers have all been trained, so they're going to be doing a lesson in their class. So we've prepared a presentation for them to give to their students, and then the students will do an activity following the presentation. And it's going to be the same K through 12. They're going to get a lesson from their teacher, and then grades 5 through 12 will get on the computer and do a coding activity, and the K through 4 will do the unplugged. But there's not going to be a big assembly, but our hope is, you know, through this we've sparked interest. And even in the past couple of weeks, we've had more schools starting after school clubs, and they're getting excited about it. Ashley, I don't think I asked you, um, I asked the earlier group what they intend to do with their life, and how do you intend to pursue computer science? Yeah, I definitely do. In college, I'll, I plan on either majoring or having it as part of my double major in computer science. And I found that computer science is very big with biology, which is another interest of mine, like modeling different parts of the cell and just doing computations with the cells. And I definitely will pursue this further. So I already talked with you a little bit about that. and the the. Anything else? I mean, did I, I just interrupted you. <laughs> well, I, I think the great part about computer science is it's so diverse. So the applications of it are endless. And so I might not know exactly what I want to do with it now, but I'll figure it out at some point. I know that's what I want to do, and I know that I'll find a job somewhere out there applying those skills that I'm learning right now. Okay, so now I have a question that has nothing to do with computer science, but it has to do with the world with technology getting more complicated. And I am a person who is of a certain age that didn't start out with computers. And I'm finding the world more and more complicated. iPhones are more and more complicated. I was, uh, I have an Apple computer. I was at Apple recently. And I, after the new iPhone came out and the place was jammed with people needing help. And they didn't have enough people there who knew about all the changes. This is a broad question. Maybe you're not the right people to ask, but it seems to me things are getting way too complicated, not necessarily with computer science, but just with technology. And things are changing too fast. Any thoughts? Am I just being a Luddite here? <laughs> <laughs> I think there is always 
a push forward. Uh, there's always a push for progress. And right now with technology, that I think it is getting very complex. And for some people, it exceeds what they know and what they're comfortable with. But I think there's always a push to help those people forward. And um, there are always people who are a little behind and a little ahead. And so I don't know. I don't know what the distribution is and um, where that's really going to take off from here. But hopefully we can make it part of our culture and uh, assimilate that into our culture where everyone can kind of become It's the with rapid it. change that yeah. I find mm -hmm. difficult and I think and, and people who are much younger than I am seem to find it difficult as well. I mean you you're very young and so to you rapid change seems totally normal and maybe your brains have changed to uh, to match the change. Uh, you're a little bit older. I, I think it's challenging because I'll get a phone and then three weeks later a new one has come out <laughs> and you've got to learn how to use the new one. Um, but, I mean, for me, it's finding a balance between the technology and not having the technology in my life, too. You know, knowing when to unplug completely and enjoy and appreciate what's around you. Um, and then being able to turn back to the technology and use it, you know, for productive reasons. And I think that's what we're trying to teach the kids in the classes, is how can I use technology productively in my life? Um, and, and so I think, it, I think it can be overwhelming, absolutely. So is there anything that you came burning to talk about that I didn't ask you? Um, I think, I don't know, I just really would love to emphasize again how great computer science has been for me. You know, before this I wasn't sure what I really wanted to do. I, I always knew I liked math, you know. And math is great because you can take real world problems and turn it into something logical and break it down bit by bit. And I thought, I'm good at this, I, I can do that. But I wasn't sure what the application of it was and computer science has given me that. And I think so many more kids would have found that niche. If, if, and hopefully that's our goal with Computer Science Ed Week, is to introduce this to more people. And hopefully they can find that, that spot too. Melissa? Um, I, agree with, <laughs> I agree with Zach. It's really for everyone, because there's so many different avenues you can go down with it, whether you do like math and you want to do the computing side of it, or if you're interested in the economy and there's so much with finance you can do. It's really any avenue that you want. You can pursue computer science, and it will help you, help you achieve your goals. I just think it's great because it reaches all levels. Um, you know, little kids can be interested and excited about it. And if you go on code.org, there's, you know, little kids who are jumping for joy when they write a program. <laughs> um, and even at the high school level, it doesn't have to be a kid who is in love with math. We have students at all levels taking it, and they are equally as excited about it. And I love what, how it teaches kids to think that it teaches them the logic and the step-by-step -step process and that it's not just about the computers, but it's about the thought process as well. So I just had an idea, teaching kids how to think. Mm -hmm. that, was the, that was the experience I had with um, geometry. Yeah. Sort of the, the, yes. the order, the right, order. The the, I loved the order. Yeah. So mm -hmm. now, it, now it's sort of, yeah. Yeah, okay. And we relate it a lot to the geometry class. Very interesting, but now we've run out of time. Thank oh. you so much <laughs> for um, uh, joining me. I'd like to thank everyone here at SCTV behind the scenes for their help in getting the show on the air. Thanks especially to my guests, Zach Walsh, Ashley, I'm sorry I got your name wrong, and Math Department Supervisor Jacqueline Petrella and Melissa Farrington and Anthony Mayen who were with us uh, in part one. Special thanks to Melissa for her great help in getting the show on the air. A reminder that this Simsbury School News will continue to air during the month of December after Computer uh, Science Education Week is over. Finally, thank you for joining us. If you missed any portion of the show, you can always find it on our website at simsburytv.org. Don't forget to like us on Facebook where you can get updates on new shows. I'm Dominique Avery. See you next time for Simsbury School News. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.